Beloved one, when you first thought to create, you left a part of you, an awareness of you that is still with you. You turned from it and you said, I want to create. What can I create? And you have created all worlds, all scenarios, everything that you can imagine in this lifetime and more because you wanted to know your creative ability. At first your creations were from love and from the Inus of being. Then, later the creative energy desired to know what else there could be, what could be unlike love. So you began an experiment. You wanted to know, how does it feel to be completely immersed in my creation and to be creatively challenged by someone else's creation? You went through incarnations where you devised a form, and someone seemingly apart from you devised a creation that came along and destroyed your creation or challenged it in some way. This is happening still, as your news media reports to you. But you have also come to a place where you are ascending. Now, there has been much talk about ascension, much talk of moving from third dimensional consciousness into fifth dimensional, and truly the numbers do not matter. Ones have said, well, what happened to fourth dimension? Did I just go past it in my sleep? Well, you can say that. Fifth dimension, as you have defined it is the place where you find yourself ascending into peace with yourself and with other ones and with what is happening in the world. When you can come to the place where you recognize that everything happens for the grand purpose of awakening, and you take the deep breath and abide in peace, you abide in the spirit of yourself. Not in the worldly spirit. And as you will practice, as you will repeat being in the space of peace and allowance, Looking for the blessing in everything, you will find that it is easier to return unto the place of home and to abide there longer. You are then achieving the ascension. Now, the ascension which is spoken about and is so highly desired is going to be the ascension of the collective consciousness. It will seem to come about eventually, but it will be done by one person as you see individuality and by another person, by another person according to their own choice and their own soul timetable. And eventually, when there comes the recognition that there is truly only one of us, then the collective consciousness will acknowledge, I have ascended. I have brought together all of my parts and I have remembered my oneness. And then the ascension will be known consciously. You know ascension already. You can feel it, you can imagine it as we speak of it. But to live in that space all of the time is yet a bit of a challenge, as the world will come in and say, yes, but how do you feel about surprises? Can you take surprises in stride and see that truly they serve a great purpose? Or, as I have seen you have expectations and expectations are part of the human scene when those expectations do not manifest exactly, there is then a time of judgment and you are very quick to judge. I know that feeling. As a small one, I also had expectations, expectations of what my mother, my father, what society of the village would be doing, and expectations of what I should do. But I came to the realization that those expectations were only temporary and passing, and I saw that I could come through the expectations. Perhaps if they were not met in the way that I thought they were going to be met, the way it worked out was better. So I give up having expectations. That is difficult in the human realm to do, but you can do it and you can feel the peace that comes with having no expectations as to how things should be or how you should be or the big one of how they should be. That is the one that trips you up most often. On the other hand, Give yourself the gold stars for how soon you give up the expectations when they are not met. Some time ago you would have held on to the disappointment of the expectation not being met. Now you look at it and you have feelings about it, you have judgments about it, and then you say, well, there must be more to this than what I see. And you can measure and give yourself the gold star as to how speedily you move from the judgment to the place of allowance. I have seen you do this, 
where you can have very, very strong emotion about something, and then after a while you can find yourself saying, well, that was my expectation based on the information that I had at the time. As you stand back from it, you can see the bigger picture. As you practice, you will find yourself blessed by a gift that you give to yourself, the gift of peace, the gift of allowance, the gift of joy that says, hey, this is better than what I thought it was going to be. Then you have arrived home for a moment or so. It does not usually last for a long time, but it lasts long enough that you can measure it, and you can feel happy about yourself and say, well, if I did that once, perhaps I can do it again. And it comes easier each time, because you have had the practices and the experience of allowance. There is a good bit of wisdom that comes with the years if you will allow it, a good bit of wisdom that comes when enough expectations have not been met the way you thought they were going to be met, and you had to deal with something that was actually even better. But sometimes you do not see the betterness of it until you get into the hindsight and see how it all fits together. That usually takes a bit of time and a bit of wisdom. Then you abide in the space of allowance. You are very blessed by everything that you create, even if it looks like manure in the first place. It allows you to grow. Even if the mate will say to you, I don't love you anymore. Go find yourself someone else. Even if it looks like there is going to be warring factions of the different geopolitical groupings, and perhaps you may be called upon to be part of it, you can step back and see peace instead. Even if the employment says, it's time for a change. We're changing everything in the structure of this grouping, and we're not going to need you any longer. We're replacing you with some technology. It can think faster. It can compute faster. It can keep better records than you do. Therefore, your position is no longer needed with this company. And your first feeling is, oh, my goodness, what do I do now? I need to be needed, and I need the golden coins because I have promised others that I will pay them the golden coins. And so there is a moment or so usually longer when you have to get very creative and see, okay, where else am I needed? Sometimes you have found that the best way to find where you are needed is to volunteer at a place where perhaps the golden coins are not given. You do not need the golden coins quite yet, but you do need to be needed. You do need to serve. And so I say to those of you who may be in transition, find a place where you can serve. Later the golden coins will come to you. But you may find that in serving. The exchange of gratitude, the exchange of being needed, the exchange of being worthy of self-worth is more valuable than all the golden coins that you used to get from the former employment. I know that many are going through transitions now where there are changes happening. And I know that many are wondering, what is the morrow going to bring? But I say unto you, the morrow is going to bring that which serves you best even if it does not look like it at first appearance. Later you will be able to look back at it and you will be able to see the blessing in it. Many times blessings are quite visible. They are right in front of you, such as in the morning when the sun will greet you. Maybe it will not stay out all day, but perhaps it will greet you in the morning. Or perhaps you will see it by the end of the day in the sunset and you will see the beautiful colors that you now have eyes to see. Know you that a long time ago you did not see all of the colors that you see now? Early in your manifestation the human form was not designed to see various vibrations of color. And in your history it is even in your science if you can go back and research it far enough back everything appeared in your creation as black and white and shades of gray. Then part of your creativity was, how can we change vibration so that we see a little differently? And you then created eyes that would be receptors of different vibrations. The same thing occurred with your hearing. At first the hearing was not attuned the way it is now. 
and you went through a period when the hearing was more sensitive than it is now, as you observe even now with your animals. But it was felt to be a big nuisance to have more vibration coming at the ears, and so you toned it down a bit. And you have noticed that perhaps as one's gain years and wisdom, sometimes the hearing also changes to the place where ones can listen not so much outwardly but inwardly, although they may not be completely happy about it and they may not see it as a blessing. But it is for a purpose. In this day and time, there is much that you do not see. And that also is for a purpose so that you do not get overwhelmed by the vibrations that are all around you. You have the most wonderful technology of your computers that connect you with brothers and sisters whom you may never see with the physical eyes, but you can connect on what is called the internet and you can get to know the person by what is written. The wireless vibrations are right here with you but you have devised an exclusionary technique so that you are not overwhelmed. In addition, you have quite a few vibrations surrounding you from the brothers and sisters. You are all vibrating with life. You are all putting out your own vibration. The plants are vibrating their life energy. The electric lights are putting out vibration. You are surrounded by vibrations. As you go within, to the place of peace within, you will find vibration, the vibratory rate of your own and that peace. You can tune into it, as you will tune into music. It will be your own theme song, and it will feel familiar when you go to the space that is your own space. You have felt this when you have been quiet and you have been in meditation. You have felt your own vibration, your own space, and you know it when you are there and you know how to come again to the place that is home within you, the place of peace that is yours. As you sit in quietness, you come to a place that truly could be equated to a vibrational musical note. You each have your own note, and when you are there, there is nothing else. When you are in the space that is you, in the tone that is you, there is nothing else for a moment. It is where you live, move, and have your being, right there in that vibration. And whenever the world will come knocking at your door, you can return quickly to the space that is yours and yours alone. Now, having said yours and yours alone, is there anyone else who shares that space, that tone with you? If, in truth, there is only one of us and I assure you that this is true yes. But it is just not one single tone. It is a whole broad spectrum of vibration that is shared as the one. You are, in essence, a tone, but as the energy that you have incorporated you have a vibratory rate, and it changes. You can see this when ones will do the photograph of the aura. You see the vibratory rate around you and you can see it change even with your thoughts. And the vibration within you changes also. You are very much in motion all of the time. Even when you feel you are at peace and very quiet, you are still vibrating, because everything is energy. You resonate at a certain frequency, but you do not always stay at that frequency. It changes moment by moment. It changes as you talk with someone. You may find someone and feel, I really vibrate with her. I'm really in resonance with her. I know this one, and when I'm with her, we're just in tune. Yes, you are. You have met at the same vibratory level, and you feel that with certain people. With other ones, it may take you a while before you reach the place of resonance, but it comes. You have built into this lifetime, subtle though it may be, opportunity to know your oneness, to feel your oneness to allow the body to be in tune with the most beautiful sunsets. You have devised it in this time. You devised another time when you did not see the various colors. And I say unto you there is going to come a time when you are going to see other colors that you cannot even dream of right now. You are going to be moving and flowing in a form that you would identify now as liquid crystal. Beautiful flowing vibratory liquid I say liquid because it flows crystal. 
you are going to change the carbon base to a crystalline base. That is already in process. Sometimes there are days when you feel a little bit strange, and that is because things are changing. Not outside of you, but within you. It is a gradual process, although there are ones who want to hurry it up sometimes and they use various substances that put them in an altered state, which can create a bit of confusion. It is their attempt to change that which has been very dense carbon based to something that flows as the divine spirit that we are. You are blessed by all of nature that you have put around you. You look unto the mountains from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from on high, a higher consciousness and the mountains signify that for you. As you will lift up your eyes to the top of the mountains it allows you to come up higher in your consciousness, recognizing that you can be on top of the mountain and you can be in the valley looking at yourself on top of the mountain and vice versa. You can be on top of that mountain looking at yourself in the valley, and it is all one. You have the flowing waters, the blessedness of water that lubricates the body and the vibration of the body. You have the flowing waters and the creatures that live within the waters, the fish that swim and jump so beautifully. You have the trees that give you the precious oxygen that you need to breathe. You watch them as they come into flower and into leaf, and you watch them as the colors change and the leaves float softly down. And then you know that in the next season they will be coming back. New leaves, new extension of life. You are surrounded by miracles. You can love the one who is most difficult to get along with, and in doing so, you recognize a capacity that you did not know you had. A capacity to love that which you do not even like but I can love you and allow you. I don't have to like you, and I don't have to be in your presence, but I do wish you well. I do love you. Then you find that, hey, if I can love that person, I must have a greater capacity for love than I ever recognized. Maybe I'm not so constricted after all. And with that comes an awakening where you begin to realize, you know, if I can do that, maybe others can do that as well. Maybe there is love in the world, and you know that there is. When I was nailed to the cross I saw the soldiers, the centurions, doing their jobs. Not all of them wanted to be there. Most of them did not like what was going on but because of generational teaching, they did what was expected of them. In the depths of their souls, it was not something that they wanted to do to torture brothers and sisters and to create fear, which they thought then brought them power. And so from the cross I loved them, because I could see that they are love, unrecognized. Unrecognized love that they had yet to express. And I will share with you that in later incarnations as they brought forth other lives for themselves, they were able to live out that love and to voice their feelings. In the lifetime when they had certain jobs to do, they did not feel that they were free to speak out or to feel. You are surrounded by gifts, blessedness that you have provided for yourself. You have said, I will create. And having created that which is unlike love, and having experienced that which is not so comfortable, you have said, now I am going to create that which is loving, that which is exciting, that which allows me to expand and to begin to understand the all that I am. You are creating moment by moment the hologram of your reality, and moment by moment you can change it. You are so blessed. You are greatly, greatly blessed by all of nature by all of technology as it is used to allow you to know your possibilities and your probabilities in the realities that you bring forth from that technology. You are blessed by everything that is in your awareness. Make your hologram beautiful. Make your hologram in resonance with your heart. Blessed art thou. So be it.